Welcome to First African Baptist Church of St. Mary's, Georgia, Sunday School Time. Our pastor is Pastor Gary Tyner, teacher Dr. Vivian Mitchell. Our unit two theme is Godly Love Among Believers, and our subtopic is Sharing Love and Truth. Our print passage is Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Our lesson aims, explore the Jerusalem church's practice and witness of communion sharing, regret their adulterous attachment to material goods, and create a plan to increase their giving for the common good. Why this lesson matters. In every community, there are people who have less than they need to maintain healthy lives. How can we best meet the needs of everyone in our community? As the first believers in Jesus shared everything in common, the needs of everyone were satisfied. Now we will begin to read today's introduction for the lesson. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. That is something that we have to be thankful for. And we're thankful for God's love and happy Sunday to you. The surface affluence our society has led to the acquisition of money as a status symbol. The more money one has identified the possessor as someone of prestige and importance. This fixation on getting more has also attributed to crimes such as burglary, armed robbery, embezzlement, money laundering, forgery, counterfeiting, and violent crimes such as murder. The word of God does not condemn the acquisition of money, but it does say, for the love of money is the root of all evil, what, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows, 1 Timothy 6 and 10. In the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 25, Jesus told his disciples that it is impossible to serve God in money, but it is possible to serve God and others with money and personal possessions. Believers are commanded to live free of the love of money and to be content with what they have because God has promised to never leave or forsake them. See Hebrews 13 and 5. In fact, God calls us to share with those in need and to give generously out of what he has given us. See Hebrews 13, 6, Luke 6, 38 and Proverbs 27, 22 and 7. The early church understood this truth in both principles and practice. The sacrificial sharing of these Christians was the practical application of God's love among his people. Now we will begin reading the scripture for today's lesson. The first section is titled Truth for Sharing, Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they, all, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Hosea, who by the apostle was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite of the country of Cyphus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The next section is titled Counterfeit Sharing, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. But a certain man named Adonias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privately to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was so, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, round him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Now chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? 
Behold, the feet of them which has buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Now we will begin discussing the scripture for today's lesson. But first, I want to go back and give you insight on today's lesson. The early church communion economic system was not mandatory, was not intended to become a continuous practice, and was not without negative internal challenges. Adonis and Sephariah lied about their generosity because it can be assumed that they saw it as a means of achieving recognition. Later in Acts 6, we discovered that it became a source of conflict because some believed that goods were not being equally distributed. Why did the system function as well as it did? It was the overarching internal foundation of the character of these believers. The principal factor was their dependence on the Holy Spirit, who provided them with a unified purpose. Their focus was on accomplishing ministry and not on religious activity, which so often leads to conflict. God still expects his people to demonstrate his love among themselves and to others. We too must seek to emulate the spirit directed character of the early church to make this expectation a priority for the ministry. The first section, Truth for Sharing, Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. In verse 32, Luke announces what is motivating a heartfelt attitude of sharing on the part of the community of faith a deep unity in the fellowship. The believers were of one heart, which is to say that the vital center of their beings were united in love. Love for brothers and sisters were their motivating factors. In verse 33, this church was Christ-centered and thus became other-centered. Their focus was on reaching the lost and the practice application of the Lord's command to selfishly and sacrificially love one another. While the congregation ministered to one another, the apostles continued to preach with great power of Christ's resurrection. In verse 34, it should be obvious that their bold doctoral teaching and preaching energized by the Holy Spirit was both spiritually and practically effective. Practically, it led to the demonstration of agape love. Love, there is unselfish desire for the best for each other by sharing their material possessions. In verse 35, because they had given themselves to the Lord first, sharing with others was not a difficult task. They sold their houses and land when the need arose and relinquished and brought the proceeds to the apostles for distribution. In verses 36 and 37, one member is singled out as an extraordinary example of sacrificial sharing one's material resources to help meet the needs of others. Joseph, surnamed Barnabas is introduced as a Levite from Cyprus who owned a trait of land, sold it, and brought the proceeds to the apostles for distribution as needs. The practical points for true for sharing is one, true Christian love can be measured by what we do with the tangible things we possess. Two, people will respond to the gospel message more enthusiastically as they see its efforts among Christians. Three, Christians should be concerned today about the needs of their brethren. And four, we should look for ways to give to the church and meet the needs in the family of God. The next section is titled Counterfeit Sharing, Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 7. In this section, verse 1, additionally Luke revealed God's attitude about deliberate, unrepentant sin. Luke uses the conjecture, but to introduce this negative contrast between Barnabas' honest generosity and the dishonest generosity of Adonis and Sapphira. In verse 2, this husband and wife jointly conspired to sell a piece of their property and hold back part of the profit for themselves. In verse 3, their action is reminiscent of Achan's who kept back some of the spoils from Jericho for himself. Joshua 7 and 1. Through the discerning power of the Holy Spirit, Peter exposed Ananias' sin and revealed the root source. In verse 4, his sin was primarily lying to the Holy Spirit, motivated by the lying influence of Satan. 
Barnabas and other members had yielded to the author of the truth and had shared honestly, lovingly, and generously. By contrast, Ananias had yielded to a liar, the father of lies, and dishonesty shared his resources. Peter explained that it was not mandatory to sell his land and he could have used all of his proceeds as he pleased. In verse 5, by yielding to Satan's influence, he was guilty of lying to the people and God. Immediately upon hearing God's judgment through Peter, Ananias fell dead. That show you power that God has. His sudden death caused a great fear, more spectacularly dreaded among those who heard about it. In verse 6, his body was carried out and immediately buried by young men in the congregation. This was, a ne- this was necessary practice in Palestine because it's hot, dry climate, and especially for one who died as a result of divine judgment. In verse 7, Zephariah, Ananias' wife, arrived three hours later, denied her duplicity in this dishonest scheme, and, and she suffered the same fate. Verses 8 through 11. As her husband, both their deaths was God's judgment and were designed to impress upon the church the seriousness of sin among his people. So the practical points for counterfeit sharing is one. Unlike Ananias and Sapphira, Christians should remember that nothing is hidden from God. Two, believers should avoid Satan's snare or trying to be great in the eyes of others. Three, although believers are free from eternal punishment, we are still liable to temporary discipline. And four, God's patience in dealing with sin does not mean he's overlooking it. Sin has its consequences. A closing thought is the early church is an exemplary model of what it takes to share love and truth. They were a spirit-filled church united in their doctrine, beliefs, fellowship, and worship. One evidence of their unity was the way they sacrificed and shared with one another as economic needs surface among them. God still expects his followers to demonstrate generosity through sacrificial sharing their material blessings to meet others' needs. A church emulating the internal characteristics of the church in Jerusalem and energized by the Holy Spirit will be motivated to bring life to the, to the command to share his love and share resources to bless the lives of others for the glory of God. So a life application for this lesson is sharing love and truth is challenging unless one life is submitted to the leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit. Identifying a legitimate need you can help meet this week that will cost you something to accomplish. Blessing others sacrificially is the key to being blessed by the giver of all things. So a closing prayer that I would like to read is, Lord, help us revive the spirit of sacrifice and loving generously. You expect us to visibly demonstrate in our lives by sharing with others what you have given us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The only way that we're going to be able to love as God commands us to love, to be the servant that God has commanded us to be, is that we first must accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And he will give us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will dwell within us. And the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. It will teach us what God's will for our life is. And so I encourage you today that if you would like to be saved, that you say a simple prayer and ask God to come into your life and to save you. If you would like for our church family or pastor to pray for you, um, here's our email address if you would like to email anyone or our phone number is listed. Always remember to never stop praying, especially for others. We As we read through the Bible, we reflect on the Bible. We can see that there is truly power that lies in prayer. God bless you and have a wonderful day.